capabilities, but they can do very simple operations and something they can do very simple over and over and over again. And that's what this metropolis algorithm is doing in order to calculate very complex probabilities. Okay, so, um, and then Bayesian statistics is kind of like that. There's some implicit definition of the probability, but you don't know how to actually get in a closed form. And so this allows you to kind of uh, approximate. Okay, so the, the thing is, there's, there's gonna be the set of states, um, V, and um, for, um, for all, all of the states, um, there's an associated weight. Um, and so there's some, if you sum over all of these states, and this can actually be an integral if it's continuous, um, then, then this is a total weight. So these are not probabilities, they would like the probabilities where you divide the weights by the total weight. But in general, this is not going to be one. And, and this is not something that you know ahead of time. Um, but what you can do is for any, any particular state, you can query this and calculate this weight. Okay, so you can calculate the weight of one state, but there are too many states. There are a huge number of states where it's a continuous state space. Um, and so, um, so, so then, um, what you'd like to do is, you'd like to, you can only probe at different states, and you'd like to figure out this normalized thing. So, so what you, um, the goal, is to get to the u of the, you'd like to understand this distribution, which is the weight of the over this, this total weight. Um, and so, now this, if this is a, if this is too large to actually calculate, then this is too large to write down exactly to. You can't even write this down. But what you'd like is a, a random sample from this distribution. So then you want a um, random sample. And so we've, we've talked a bunch of times in class kind of what properties you can get with different levels of random samples. So I don't even know what this distribution is, but this will be an algorithm where I can sample from it. And from that random sample, I can then do all sorts of statistics and ask questions about it to prove how, how close I am understanding the full distribution and stuff like that. So the goal is gonna be this random sample of this unknown state space that I can only, all I can do is I can probe it. I can ask for this, this weight. And I don't know the total weight, I only know something proportional um, to the true distribution. Okay, so now, so this isn't yet, this is not yet a Markov chain, right? But, but I know what I want is I'm, I want, um, um, I want um, mu of v is equal to q star of v in um, so I want this to be true for some Markov chain. So I want my Q star to be, to be equal to this mu. So I'm going to somehow design a Markov chain so I achieve this. And then I can use some techniques for Markov chain to do this, to, to actually approximate this or sample. And so, again, th this state space could be continuous, it could be really large, so I don't want to define this whole matrix which I which I erased. I want to define something implicitly which just tells me how I do the transformation. So I'm going to define an algorithm which is my transition matrix and then I can apply this algorithm over and over again. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, so, so I'm going to start at Q0 and then I'm going to Um, repeat, right? And so this is me going to the limit. I'm going to the limit, right? And uh, so then what you do is you um, uh, uh, find a neighbor uh, P of, of Q. And so you want to pick some state that's nearby somehow. Usually 
you think of the state space, maybe this is equal to Rd, and you pick something maybe within a radius, a point at random, you, you, may, you probably do this at random. Um, so at um, random, or, or maybe you have like a Gaussian and you pick something proportional to the Gaussian. And we know how to generate Gaussian random variables even in high dimensions, right? So, okay, so, so we do this, um, and then we, um, we say, if the weight of P is, um, let's call this QI, if the weight of P is greater than the weight of QI, then I'm going to set QI plus one equal to P. Right, so if I, if I picked a neighbor and my neighbor's weight was larger, I always jump to it, okay? Um, so else, with probability um, WP over WQI, I still um, move QI plus one equals to P. So even if, even if the weight is smaller, sometimes I move. And so if, if they're about the same, then I'm, I'm usually going to move. But if P is, if the weight of the other point is one half of, is one half the weight of QI, then I move half the time. And if I don't, um, um, otherwise I set QI plus one equal to QI. If not, I make a step and I and stay in the same spot. I still move my counter forward. So this is still a new state, but it's a duplicate of the state of and, and this is it, right? So, so, so this is the whole algorithm. I repeat until I've converged them out. Um, so typically there are a couple of variations of this. You actually, there's, you could end up starting in some really weird location. So say if you started in H, and H is kind of, and, you know, it's hard to get to the rest of the chain, so usually you, you kind of, um, you, uh, uh, you, well, okay, so wait, I should explain this more carefully. So the, 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 the theoretical algorithm, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to do this a large number of times until you've, you've uh, converged, and this is called when the Markov chain mixes. When you've mixed, you use <coughs> QI plus one for I, you know, for I equals like a thousand or something. And that's one random sample. Now if I take the next step, that is going to be, because it's a neighbor of the point, it's not going to be another random sample. So I need to take another thousand steps and then I get one more random sample. Right, so this is for one random sample and eventually I want to get like a whole bunch of these random samples. Now in practice, that's not how people use this. What they do is they say, I'm gonna go for a thousand steps and, and then I say my chain is mixed. I'm at some state that's probably from the Q star distribution. Um, and, uh, and then I'm going to take the next 5,000 steps and collect those 5,000 states, and that's my random sample. Um, and that tends to work more efficiently. Sometimes you have to, there's, you have to kind of discount, you have to pretend that those 5,000 are actually 1,000 samples and like in, in when you do the, your, your uh, approximation bounds on how big the sample is. Um, but that's what people use. So, I, so I, 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 I've gone over time, but you can show that if that this is going to be, this chain is going to be your guide, and it's going to converge to the Q star distribution. Um, there's some way you can show it. And it's a really simple algorithm. People <coughs> use this for simulating kind of energy landscapes where the, the, the weight is proportional inversely proportional to the amount of energy it takes to be a state for like protein folding and stuff like that. So this is kind of a very widely used thing. And these, if this is the, the likelihood of a Bayesian probability, which is proportional to the, the true distribution, but you don't know the ratio, then you can calculate, you can sample from it, even if you just know the likelihood, which is something you can calculate. Maybe expensive to do, but you can do it for any one location, but not a close form for everything. So, so th this is from this first technique where you're moving one state at a time. You're not keeping track of the full QI distribution. You're just keeping one possible state. On Monday, we'll talk about keeping the entire state. Okay, uh, sorry, I've gone over time. So 
questions about the project, it's due Monday. You can stop by my office hours or send me an email.